When it comes to tiny houses, it doesn't get any more classic than the old house trucks of yesteryear. And today we're about to meet a man who has beautifully renovated an old Bedford house truck into a stunning tiny home. Hey James, how's it going mate? Yeah, good mate, how you doing? I'm very well, thank you. And I'm really excited to see your epic home here. Yeah, cheers mate. I've lived in it for about a year and a half now and I absolutely love living in it, eh? Yeah. yeah. So vintage house bus, it does not get much cooler than that, does it? No, I think it's about a 1960s uh, Bedford house truck. And uh, yeah, just keep the original patina look and went from there really. Yeah. A definite classic. Yeah, I found it at a garage sale. Uh, 500 bucks, empty. No way. <laughs> yeah, so it was quite crazy. I was actually living in my van at the time and uh, I was about to put a deck around it, put a fireplace in it and then this popped up and I remember saying to my dad, I was like, I feel like I need to go uh, check that out. When I first found the truck, I remember the first thing was I didn't smell um, mustiness, I didn't smell damp and I was like, this is a really good sign. And it was just beautiful. Yeah, there was something about it and it looked a mess. You know, it had like leopard print uh, carpet, but I could see so much potential. I really could. And um, when I brought it back, people uh, looked at it and <laughs> I remember telling my cousin, I was like, oh, do you mind if I like buy a house truck and put it on your property? He was like, how big is it? I was like, oh, it's not very big. And we towed it there. The guys from work actually helped me tow it there. And uh, they were just cracking up. I eh? just seen this old gypsy house truck and it was a bit of entertainment for the old fellas because <laughs> it was a state. Like just the walls, like it looks like mold all over the walls, and it just people thought I was crazy, but I could see what was going to happen with it. Because these house trucks, these really are sort of the original tiny homes of New Zealand, they aren't are. they? Yeah, and that's what I love about it is that you know this once upon a time was someone's house on the road, and uh, I wanted to keep it, and uh, like the curved ceiling, the huge loft space, it's just perfect. The flow of everything just works really well. And you have done quite a lot of extensive work renovating this though, haven't you? I have, but I've done only kind of what I need to do. I actually wasn't even going to do the exterior cladding, but I was about to do all the wood look vinyl and I got sideways rain and I was in there and it started leaking through the walls and I was like, we should probably replace this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so all the cladding on it's new then? Yep. So it's just plywood, you know, it's not perfect, but this is the thing with this old girl is that I don't like perfect. It kind of adds to it. If I make a mistake, I'm like sweet as either I fix it or I leave it. it just depends how it is. I kind of like that little surprise of what's going to happen. And I see you've got the solar panels around the other side as well. So you're off the grid in this one? Yeah, and I've never run out of power yet. Like I haven't got a plug to plug into. So if I run out of power, I run out of power. But um, I do have gas cooking and gas hot water. So I just need candles really and just charging things. So it wouldn't be the end of the world anyway. Yeah. What about water here? So I have a big thousand litre tank that I just fill up. The reason why I've done that is just because where I used to live would get really bad frost and if I had the hose connected I'd have to insulate the entire hose. So I just didn't really want to deal with that. And it looks like you've got some really creative stuff going on with your grey water. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, so that was something that I really just wanted to do properly. So the way it works is the grey water from the sink and also the pee from the toilet, there's a separator in there. They both feed into a worm farm and then it goes into volcanic rock. And essentially that will go through as another filter and then back into the land. And then with the shower water, I used to have it going through the worm farm, but it was just, it was too much liquid. Yeah. And it would kind of drown them a little bit. So I was like, okay, well, shower water isn't too bad. I use lots of um, like soaps and shampoos. They're as good as they can be. And then it goes into a holding tank. So that holding tank, then I recycle into my garden. And so it's great because it means if I want a really long shower, I don't feel guilty about it because I'm going to put it back into the garden and then I can eat the food from the garden. So yeah, yeah it works well. Well, this whole place is just so packed full of character and I cannot wait to see what you've done inside the truck. Can we check it out? Yeah, no worries. Cool. After you, mate. So this is probably one of my favorite spaces. It's my, uh, my shower that I built. This is actually a completely separate building. So I can move it. I just have to rebuild the foundation. So from the last property, uh, we just picked up the whole thing, unbolted it, 
and then built a new foundation and then plotted it back down. What a great idea. Should we take a peek inside? Yeah, no worries. Hey, this is very cool. I love that window there. <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite pieces of the whole home. It was in my mate's paddock, just sitting there. It was an old door. And I love a really light shower, lots of natural light. And uh, it also just dries it out. It gets so hot in here because I've insulated the entire shower. Right. And it actually is a bit of a sauna, but in the winter it's lovely. You hop in here and it's nice and toasty. And um, it gets really steamy in here, which I love. Like at night time, I, I get the candles going and get the shower going. And you get a bit of the steam and get some incense. And it's, it's actually one of my favorite part of the day, just coming in here. And it's just a really nice relaxation. Sounds pretty magic. Yeah, it really is. And uh, recently I've just put new flooring down, which is uh, recycled Remu from um, a house we're renovating. And uh, yeah, I just, I love the old wood look. It's just gorgeous. Absolutely. And it's always nice to be able to reuse materials as well. Definitely. There are little bits and pieces of Bora, but adds to the character in my eyes. Yeah. Very cool. Should we check out the rest of the house? Yeah, of course. Awesome. After you. Thank you. Oh, now this is just so cool. You were right about it really having an amazing sense of space inside here, eh? Yeah, it feels like quite a large space and I do think a lot of it has to do with the curved ceiling. Absolutely. Yeah. So immediately here on the entrance, what do we have either side of us? So this here is the original wardrobe. So I just sanded it back, I gave it a nice stain and I wanted to keep some original features. So I was lucky that this was still in really good condition. Yeah. And over on this side is the composting toilet. <laughs> I love that this is not only your composting toilet, but also a tool shed. Yeah, I just thought I may as well make use of the space and it's great. All my little tools and bits and pieces and uh, it works really well. Yeah, and you can work on projects while you're on the loo. How good is that? <laughs> that works fantastic. Yeah, that's where all the creativity comes out. I love it. And then over here, we've got your table. Yeah, so this is Macrocarpa. These two pieces were one big slab and uh, I didn't look at it really too uh, in-depthly and uh, it's got a nice little curve in it so if I do spill anything it just goes to the middle of the table instead of on the sheepskin rug so I think it works quite well. Absolutely. <laughs> and then this here folds up as well, does it? Yeah, it does because there's a single bed underneath. Uh, I just thought may as well make use of the space. Yeah, and I really like how you have done this as well because it's this very interesting hybrid between a lounging space and a dining area. Yeah, and that's what I'm all about. I really love sinking into the lounge and, and really just being comfortable. I don't like sitting on a chair and being all rigid. I love how I can cook dinner and I can just lounge and sit here and feast. And that's what I do most nights is I love to cook. So I cook some nice food and then I just hang out. And, you know, if you have someone around, you can both sit either side and you can both lie on it. But you've also, you can have your wine, you can have your food. And it's just a really intimate setting and... Yeah, I, I really do love love this spot here. And then this fireplace over here is just so cool as well. The fireplace itself is really unique. And then I love what you've done with the river stones underneath. Yeah, so this fireplace is actually off a local guy uh, in New Brighton. And it's an old gas bottle, one of those real tall ones. He cuts them in half and he makes these masterpieces. And uh, it's an amazing fireplace. Because a lot of these tiny house fireplaces, they're really small. They don't make sense to me. Whereas I can pack it full of wood and I can shut it down and, and it will last most of the night. Great. Yeah, and then the, the hearth, I had a different idea of how I wanted it to turn out. Um, it didn't exactly go as planned, but I ended up flipping it over and all the cement had kind of just a thin layer, so I just got a hammer and cracked it and now it looks like a braided river. It does, it looks so good. And then over here we have your kitchen, and this is of course a really important space for you, isn't it? Because you do have a real passion for cooking. I do, I do. And I wanted it to be a really functional space, but also not take up a lot of space as well. And this is actually original. This came with the truck, and if I wanted to get rid of it, I would have had to cut it up, and I just couldn't do that. <laughs> Fair enough too. I can really understand why. This paint looks really interesting. Yeah, so I originally had it blue and I just never really liked it. I always found doing colors and painting just so hard. And then I found this copper paint and it actually has about 10 to 30% uh, worth of real copper in it. So over time, it should actually get a bit of the patina look to it. Beautiful, that sort of green oxidization. Yeah, exactly. So I'm really excited for it, yeah. Lovely. 
And the kitchen here has all the essentials. I see you've got a nice gas range here, fridge, sink, everything you need. Yeah, it does. So the gas oven actually only cost me 200 bucks, which I was pretty stoked with. What a deal. Yeah, I was really happy with that. And it's a proper oven. It's quite funny when I tell people I live in a house truck and they turn up and they're like, oh my God, you have a, a real oven. I was like, yeah, it's my house. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to have a proper kitchen. And yeah, the fridge, it's a 12 volt. I used to have a bit of gas, but ran into a few problems with it. And yeah, it's a proper functioning kitchen. Like It's better than a lot of homes to be fair. Yeah. And do you find that you have enough storage in your kitchen here? Yeah, I definitely do. I'd say this is what I use the most of is all my sauces and my herbs. I really love to be able to see everything because two things is it's just I find it aesthetically pleasing and also I forget what I have and then I end up having 20 of one thing. So it's nice for me personally. And it's lovely how all of your open storage just wonderfully frames that window. Yeah, it does. I mean, right now actually it does look quite good with the light. Right here in the afternoon, the sun can come straight through and you get, I always find a lot of the reds and the yellows are the ones that poke through it quite nicely. And then you've got more storage here leading up into your loft as well? Yeah, so I built these from scratch. Um, so these are off an old drawer unit and I cut them in half and then this is all pallet wood and then the face is all Remu. Great. And yeah, it just stores all my clothes that I can't hang up. Nicely done. And then the bed up here as well. This looks like such a comfy space. Yeah, so I actually extended the loft to put a queen bed on it because I was like, gotta have a good bed. Yeah. You know? And uh, yeah, I do love it. For a tiny house, it's a really good space. You've got the telly up there as well, and even the Xbox. Yep, even got Chromecast and Wi Fi. So I've got all the little perks. Living the dream. Yeah. <laughs> so you mentioned you've been living here for about a year and a half now. How are you finding the space works for you? Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day and how um, it doesn't feel like I've been here a year and a half. I think it's just because it's such a functional home. It doesn't feel like I'm living in a house truck, if that makes sense. Like, I could be at any home. And it's quite funny going to a big house and I'm like, I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> yeah, one thing I've come to realise is that I'm actually quite a tidy person. I didn't think I would be because you have to be in a tiny space. But it's also just little bits and pieces that I've come to realise that I, I really appreciate, like little bits of pottery and plants and just like I was saying earlier with all the different colours and textures that if I lived in an apartment with just a bed and I had plain walls, I wouldn't be as happy as what I am. I need all those little things in my life to feel fulfilled. Now, amazingly, you bought this home for only $500, which just completely blows my mind. But you have obviously done a lot of work to it since then. So can you tell me a little bit about the cost that was involved in realizing this home? I definitely didn't write down what I spent. Um, but when I think about it, I would say, especially with the Solar Power Incorporated, because that was probably the most expensive part, maybe about 15000 But that's also because I've been able to recycle a lot of things like all of the pallet wood I got for free. I was lucky to be in Tamuka at the time and there was a pallet factory and they couldn't actually use any of the wood that had knots in it, which was perfect for me because the knots is the best part of the wood. Yeah. And just being the sort of person I am, I just find lots of things for free. I go out of my way to try and do that because that's just something that I enjoy as well as just going to secondhand stores and it's part of the journey for me. And to say that you've been able to build your home for $15,000, that's pretty incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it is, because it's like I have no debt and um, I'm able to live in a city, essentially. And it's great because it makes me quite financially free to be able to actually enjoy lots of things and be able to go down the road and go have some nice beer and have a nice dinner and not be like, oh, I've got a mortgage over my head because I don't. Yeah. And so what does the future hold for you now? I will actually want to build myself a bigger tiny home and yeah I would like to build quite a big one but I definitely want to still be able to create this type of sort of atmosphere but in a larger space so that is definitely an exciting new thing for me but I'm kind of just enjoying just moving to a city and just having a bit of fun right now. Yeah what this is to me is a home and especially where I've got a place now this feels like where I'm meant to be 
And yeah, I can pick it up and move it, but that's not what I want to do for a wee while. And moving here recently was a really good transition for myself. It feels great, and um, I think the biggest thing for me is when I bring someone home here to share the space with and just seeing how much they appreciate it. I love bringing people here and they sit here and that they look around kind of in wonder, and that's my favourite part is just watching that process. And I'm like, oh, you actually love this as much as I do. And that's something that is just so close to me. And it, yeah, it means a lot to me when people do that. James, what you've created here in this home really is something very special. I can really see how much flair you've got for building. And I am super excited to see what you do next. Thank you so much for sharing your home with me. Thanks for popping by, Matt. This here is a tiny home, which is definitely big on character. I think for me, what really strikes me about this space is just how cozy and just how comfortable it is. This is a place that when you're inside it really feels like a home. And ultimately, who could ask for anything more than that?